I get it. There's so many softwares in order to do usability testing these days that it's hard to choose. And I myself, as I've been a designer for over the past decade, I think I tried dozens of them and honestly, I only like a handful. Now, one of my top favorites is UX Tweak. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview and a walkthrough of how to create your first usability testing in UX Tweak and why you should or shouldn't use it for your next test. Now, I also wanted to let you know that this is not a sponsored video. I never contacted UX Tweak and uh, this is essentially my personal thoughts uh, and uh, my genuine uh, opinion on this software. And also just before we get started, I want to remind you that I recently launched a free course on how to get started in UI UX design. So if you're interested in joining this field, feel free to check it out in a link in the description. But now without further ado, let's jump right into the video. All right, so we're in the uxtweak.com website, which uh, is where you have to go in order to sign up. And as you can see, this uh, software used by major companies and you can create all sorts of different things including card sorting, tree testing and all sorts of different um, services which we can test for usability that we're going to look in just a moment. So in order to register you simply have to go out here on a try UX tweak for free or simply click on a register and the moment you do that you can see that uh, you're going to be prompted to enter a new email and a password to create a new account or you can sign up with Facebook or sign up with uh, Google so that you can leverage these uh, two social platforms as well. Now, the moment you're signed up, you're going to see this dashboard right here. So you're going to be greeted with uh, a few actions that you can potentially do and an overview of uh, what are the options at your disposal. So the very first one is organized content uh, by using either card sorting or tree testing. So these are very popular UX uh, testing methods. Uh, the second one is uh, basically uh, a way, uh, different ways to understand uh, what your users do, need, think and feel. So you can see here we have a preference test, uh, five second test, uh, survey or session recordings directly on uh, of the website so you can literally get like recordings uh, um, of users so this usually is very useful also these surveys haven't really tested that much the preference test and five second test but those two are usually uh, really staples in ux uh, testing and of course you're going to have uh, also the usability testing so first click test uh, the prototyping test uh, uh, website uh, testing which is another one which i use all the time with clients and also here you're going to have the user panel and recreative widget so let's get started with a very first usability test which is going to be the most common one i would assume for most users which is the website testing so the moment we click on website testing you can see that this small popover appears and we have a few different options. So the main one is to click here to create a new website testing, which we're gonna do in just a moment. But just to give you a brief overview, here you're going to find all of the active studies. So studies which are of websites which are being tested at the moment. You're going to find the inactive ones so ones which uh, you essentially put on hold uh, and uh, you're not uh, really doing any uh, studies at the moment. Here you're also going to find the drafts. Uh, so uh, this is pretty straightforward, just drafts that you haven't really launched. And uh, over here you're going to find all of the finished studies. So all the website uh, testing which uh, you already completed. Now let's click on a new website testing and as you can see this uh, um, model is going to appear right away and uh, essentially what uh, this uh, is asking for is to copy this snippet in the head of your website. Now depending which platform you're using or even if you're just uh, uh, having uh, the website built in hard code you're going to need to, to figure out where is uh, um, the what is the way to add this code into the head. In uh, WordPress, usually it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, there's also plugins for, for doing that. So just, for example, if you're using you know Squarespace, just Google 
how to add the code in the head of website. Same is true for, you know, maybe Webflow or other platforms that you might be using. So I won't go too much into the details, but essentially you need this in order to track uh, and uh, do all the usability testing. So definitely uh, the very first step, once that is done, you're pretty much ready to rock and roll with your very first usability testing. So over here, you can uh, um, see that uh, we have all of the main sections. So the first one is going to be general. So you can name the study. So for example, study for Google. And as you can see, this name changes. You can select the, ch the language of this usability testing. Uh, so for example, if you do it in Italian, and uh, you can add a study domain. Um, you would need to essentially uh, over here add uh, the domain. Here is the protocol if it's HTTP or HTTPS with the security and also the website uh, type. So essentially here you can add uh, the different uh, type of websites uh, and uh, just click on add and you have it uh, over here. Now on the right, uh, you can uh, see we have the options for the respondent identification if it's anonymous or if it's uh, via email address or other um, usually just skip it by default also you can add password protection if you want to create a private study so you can simply add the password right here usually don't uh, um, give it a password closing rule and uh, this is of course unless you're working with a client which requires you to to do so or where it's sensitive in that uh, case now closing rule um, manually responded limit and closing data so these are all uh, uh, things that uh, that you can literally you know change but usually i just keep it on manually then over here the tasks uh, th these are essentially going to be the bread and bread and butter of uh, your usability test because here is where you're going to add uh, the tasks uh, which are needed to complete so for example click uh, on uh, the e-commerce uh, button of course it just made this up uh, maybe it's not uh, <laughs> the, the best uh, um, the best way to format this text or the, the best uh, task but essentially just to give uh, just to make the, the point across over here you can uh, select the start url so basically saying uh, where is going to be the page that they're going to see in order to um, be prompt and uh, take action and, and ex successfully execute this task over here you can also have the success url address so basically the url as they say here that you want uh, responded to navigate to complete this task so this, uh, you can simply say simple URL match, exact URL match, uh, URL starts with all of these uh, different rules. I would just keep it simple URL match. And uh, by the way, um, if you have any uh, questions or you're wondering what, what is this section, what is, you know, these, these different sections in UX tweak, uh, something which is really useful is uh, these, uh, um, these question marks right here which give you a complete overview of uh, what uh, is uh, this uh, option or section about so you can uh, literally just uh, um, browse through ux tweak this way it's very very easy and uh, this is pretty much how i learned all of the advanced uh, settings and uh, i'm by no means an expert but uh, this definitely keeps you on the ball now over here, over the, on the options, uh, you can see that uh, you can decide uh, where to have the task panel position on the page, if on the top or on the bottom. And uh, also this is a really cool feature, the Think Out Loud, uh, um, which essentially, as they explain here, is uh, it allows you to collect voice feedback from uh, your respondent. So you can ask respondent to narrate their testing experience with not only what they're doing, but why they are doing it so this can be really useful to also have that recording on top of your ux uh, um, uh, usability testing so here you can also decide if you want to randomize the task or allow respondent to skip task uh, you can decide here don't randomize the first task for example or the last one 
and the number of tasks to show to a respondent. You know, this one is pretty straightforward, it's going to be off. And uh, you can also ask the questions uh, after um, each task. So if any of this, uh, by the way, is not uh, super clear, you're going, to, you're going to be able to have a live preview by simply click here on preview. So say that you added a few tasks and you're wondering, oh, okay, is, is this actually working now? You can literally see a preview of this usability test, uh, you know, click on following and essentially you can see all that you created live in this preview. So very, very useful, of course. Now let's move on to the very next one, which is uh, the different type of messages that the uh, user is going to receive uh, at the start of the usability testing, the instructions, and also the thank you and closing messages. So essentially the ones which you literally just uh, saw uh, over here, you can add images, you can format the text however you want. So very, very um, cool and uh, a clean experience overall. Now over here, you can also include the screening questions <clears throat> or pre-studied questions and post-study questions. So as we mentioned previously in uh, the other videos, <clears throat> these are questions which uh, you might, might as well consider asking. So screening questions and also pre-study questions can be quite useful. And if you want to add them, uh, simply add or over here, uh, questionnaire in this uh, study collect personal data and uh, you can uh, literally you know go ahead and uh, um, consider adding those as well now let's go over here and uh, here we're going to be in the screening section again another really important uh, part of uh, the usability testing and uh, over here you can uh, decide if you want to record respondents from everywhere or only record from specific regions and countries and uh, you can also block IP addresses and uh, also decide the uh, um, settings regarding the devices. So if you want to record from all devices or only record from allowed devices, which you're going to set up. And um, you can also select the operating systems and also the web browsers, subdomains. Usually these are not really options that uh, I edit too much unless uh, the project uh, requires and, you know, it's um, basically something that could help uh, the final results. Now, if we go over here, you can also select uh, uh, settings regarding the sessions. Again, uh, this should be pretty straightforward. Just ha have a look also here. Some, some of these are uh, pretty uh, specific. So again, I don't really mess around too much with these options usually. And uh, over here in the branding tab, you can see that you can create uh, and uh, modify your branding. So instead of having uh, at the top uh, the logo of uh, UX Tweak, uh, as you can see here, you can change it to the logo of your company. You can also change the uh, color palette and um, yeah, just ba basically changing all, all the uh, main questionnaire and you know, usability testing colors. And over here under the recruit, um, you can uh, essentially recruit the respondents as they mentioned. And uh, here, the first option, share study address, as they're saying, uh, place a link to this study onto your website, an invitation email, customers, social media. Uh, this, this is basically uh, where to share the, uh, the study. And uh, this one here is uh, the uh, important one. So you need to create uh, a recruiting widget, which uh, basically will allow you to recruit visitors for your usability testing. And uh, if the moment you click on create a new widget, you're going to be prompted, well, again, <laughs> with this, uh, um, with this uh, code that you need to add. But most importantly, uh, here you're going to set up uh, all of uh, the um, essentially essential settings for the recruiting process. So you're going to um, basically select all of these uh, uh, elements and then you can go back uh, to the actual usability testing. And uh, once you have this uh, set up, 
you can officially launch the campaign and uh, in a matter of days usually you're going to see the first results so again this is uh, we've just went through the website usability testing but there's so much more that you can, you can do if you x tweak uh, card sorting are also quite useful tree sorting uh, and uh, also the survey and session recording. So it really depends on your project needs. Uh, what are your goals with uh, the specific uh, usability testing that uh, you're looking to do? And uh, then uh, simply you can leverage this tool to have uh, um, a one point of truth when it comes to usability, recording all of the, um, all of the data points. So definitely look into it. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video.